What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and boy, oh boy, what a day, huh? We got the Suicide Squad info, a lot of it, and a very divisive kind of thing, and I can't say I'm all that surprised. So this is going to be a little tough. I got to be honest with you, and I want to kind of be open in the beginning of this video. I want to talk about what was said, the good, the bad, but I have to be careful, I guess, on my own, right? Because I can't throw in personal opinions of how I felt when I played the game when we you know had the closed tech test so kind of bear with me as we go through this video I talk very fast I ramble and so I hope I don't trip myself up I'm going to try to watch my words a little bit you know carefully in this video but we got a lot of talk and you know a lot of I would say I, I would say it's kind of split okay the journalists the game spots of the world the IGNs of the world there's actually quite a bit of negativity right there was some positives and I read like six different I read like the Euro gamers and I think Game Informer was the only I'm pretty sure it was Game Informer at least that one was pretty positive I remember there was like one out of like six that I read that really didn't have anything negative to say I think Game Informer had some questions of like hey can this all turn out good when the game comes out but everywhere else IGN GameSpot Euro gamer a few others some negativity and I got to be honest, I actually think that's kind of rare. Um, when you have these preview-like events, it's normally pretty positive that people normally try to kind of like watch what they say, right? Uh, not necessarily like everybody's bought off, but, you know, we've talked about it before. There's definitely some incentive to at least say, hey, you know, instead of like flat out attacking a game, maybe I'll like question it. Because if I question it, I'm not being too negative, and then they can invite me back for future things. And that happens a lot, at least my take on it. That happens a lot in the gaming industry. So to see an IGN article and a GameSpot article and a Eurogamer and a few others that were pretty negative overall. There were a few pauses, and we're going to talk about it, but the overall takeaway was, eh, this is not really it. That's kind of surprising to me. Um, then you had content creators. You had kind of the other you know, side of things, right? And I would say they were a lot more positive. It was, it was kind of mixed, actually. And I don't know if that's all that surprising, right? The the more like underdog, these people that, you know, one, one person, you know, runs their entire entire channel it's their own thing right they get invited and they're a bit more positive on the game I feel like it's probably gonna be somewhat in between and this is what's tough right because I do have opinions and I mean I wish I can say how I feel about it but I still can't do it I do think it's let's just say that without spoiling it right or breaking any terms of anything I think it's going to kind of be in between. I don't think this game is going to be terrible, but I don't think this game is going to be all that amazing. And I, I'll leave my personal thoughts there. But what we did get is a couple different, I guess, parts of the game. So the talk on the story and the characters, I would say across the board, seemed pretty positive. It was the gameplay that seemed to divide people more. But what I saw from all of them, even the ones that were more negative, the characters in terms of like the acting, the dialogue, pretty darn good, right? There was a couple that said it was annoying to kind of hear everybody constantly talking. Uh, so there was that, I guess. But overall, I would say the story, the characters were definitely a highlight. And you see kind of here and there a lot of talk of, well, there's still some like Arkham spirit in there, right? Like Rocksteady maybe still knows how to do the story. And you're still going to have to wait for the base game to come out. But it might be worth playing just to see how that goes, right? And there's not too much more you can say because they played, I believe, Chapter 1, which was kind of the beginning, and I, I think that's the closed tech test, too, is what people played. And then they played Chapter 3. They jumped ahead, and I think Chapter 3 was where they did that Flash boss, which I definitely want to mention that Flash boss in just a second. But those were, like, the two parts that they actually played. So when it comes to gameplay, that was a whole lot more mixed, right? I think you saw people that kind of said... It, when things are in stride, and I saw this from even some of the negative articles, when your character's movements, like literally how you're getting from point A to point B, when you're in stride and you're feeling it, it feels pretty good from to get to point A to point B, right? When you're not feeling it, and when you mess up like one jump or one, say, Harley with like the hook shot, right? When you mess up one of those, it kind of falls apart. I also saw, I think one tried to compare it, and you could debate amongst yourselves if, it, if it's right to compare, but Spider-Man 2, right? Like the feel of Spider-Man 2, the fluidity of it, Suicide Squad doesn't have it. Again, I wish I could tell you how I felt about the fluidity because that's actually something when I played it, in my head, I had a lot of thoughts about that. There's the objectives, and this is something I definitely want to, you know, spend a few minutes talking about, okay? 
the objectives, I think, overwhelmingly was the worst part from all of these different places, okay? If there was a negative. And it's pretty much what I gather. You're going to be doing the same thing over and over and over. And I don't really think they've shown us anything to suggest it's not going to be like that, except, let me throw this in, I think the point of the gameplay is the builds, the builds of your character, and the, I guess, working off of one another. The fact that you are obviously, again, playing with other people. If you're not playing with people, you're going to be playing with bots. The idea that you're doing it together and you're trying to complement each other, that's the gameplay loop. Because I think the literal gameplay loop, from what has been said in these previews, is a lot of the exact same objectives. Pick something up, deposit it, defeat a wave of enemies. They, I saw a lot of things of talking about dead time. There's just time where basically the enemies respawn or the next objective happens, and there's, like, nothing going on in the world. Um, so that, I mean, those things are definitely worrying, right? You're playing the game to play the game. I mean, like I said it the first time, right? So that is something that's always, wor I mean, like, that's not breaking anything from what I played in the closed tech test, right? My number one concern with this game has been how the game feels and the gameplay loop. And now where I've settled on it is I'm going to play it for the story. I, I hope that it can keep me invested gameplay-wise at least to get through the story. And then I'll come back when all the characters come out, you know, long term. This is, It's a game that you they want you to play for a, a long time, right? And constantly, I don't think I'll be doing it. And I've been pretty open, I would say, with that. For the people that want to play it all the time, I think it'll generally be pretty okay. Because, again, I think the whole balancing your characters with somebody else and getting your own build, that might wipe out the more negative approach or, or aspect of it of repetitive design. But the design thing is a little troublesome seeing, you know, people say it. And then we have the Flash boss. Now, okay, I want to say this with the Flash boss. So I saw the whole IGN thing. Funny enough, if you read GameSpot's preview, they complain about the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Now, here's the deal. If one person says it, you might say, well, maybe they just suck at the game. If two people say and you have to remember, it's IGN and GameSpot. So these are not the most talented of gamers on planet Earth, okay? And I can't believe I'm doing this. I want to defend IGN just on one point, and it's like a what if, because we still have to play the game in order for me to fully like back what I'm saying here. It sounds like the negatives of the Flash boss is more about design than talent. Now... If you suck and you have no talent, it can make any design look bad. I want, so I want to say that. So, you know, because normally I'm very critical on gaming journalists, and I still am. But I do want to say, to me, not necessarily like how it was worded. I think IGN did a very poor job of wording it. And I, even like how they showed what was happening didn't seem like an all-star, you know, gamer playing that game. But GameSpot complained about it as well. I actually saw a few other people talk about it too. So I think there could be something there literally in the design of the Flash boss. And you know what? That is valid, right? Like, if the boss design and how you take the Flash out is not good, that is something you can say. And that is separate from skill. Again, though, skill can make anything better or worse. If you are amazing, you might make any design look better. If you're terrible, any design, even if it's good, might be bad. So I just want to throw that out there that, you know, I've seen, obviously, so much talk about it. But, and I think you're, I mean... Like, yeah, can we assume that IGN's just bad at playing games? Probably. But I also think the idea of, well, could the Flash boss fight be, like, troublesome? Like, could, could it literally just not be designed well? Absolutely. Especially when you combine it with what we just talked about, right? The, the issue, overwhelmingly the issue, is the objectives, is what you do minute to minute in the game. So would it surprise me if the Flash boss also had a problem with that? No, it wouldn't surprise me, right? So those are, I would say, the biggest highlights. I actually saw something from Lejeune's channel that I thought was pretty cool in the, in the sense that I guess you can take people. So like if I play as Harley and you put me in your group, you play as, say, King Shark, and you play for like five hours at night and you take my Harley, you can earn me collectibles like armor and gear and all that stuff. And then when I log in, I will get that stuff even though I never played the game in the first place, right? I didn't play with you for those five hours. I think that's awesome. I don't know. I'm sure like maybe do MMOs do that? Like I don't know. I don't play these kind of games normally, right? That's a cool feature. Um, and I did not know that until maybe half an hour ago. So I like that a lot. But you know, beyond that, I guess uh, we covered everything I kind of wanted to say. It seemed like people played enough to get a I guess, a general scope of the game and be able to talk about it generally 
In the same way, I'm going to keep banging that freaking drum, as a lot of people that played the tech test. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's some. You know, again, like that Lejeune thing. There's a few things here and there. Uh, obviously, the Flash boss, you know, is something additional, right? But I don't know. Like, I think a lot of people have something to say about this game. And I think what we're being told is is a lot of it we kind of either already know or have our own opinions on. You know what I mean? Like, I have opinions on the story quality based off what I've already played. I have opinions on the gameplay based off what we already played. I don't think they have any better or worse uh, grasp of it than we do. So, again, we're back to what I've talked about the last couple of days. I really wish they would just let us talk because there's things I want to add before the game comes out that I fear we're not going to be able to. So... That's not ideal, but at least we can hear these people talk about how the game operates and, hey, the strengths seem to be the characters and the story and the weaknesses, you know, here and there, the gameplay, this and that. You know, you might have the same opinion, you might not, based off if you've played it or not, right? Um, so we'll just have to take it from there, I guess. We'll see. I mean, this is seems like a very divisive game. I, I don't know. When it comes to review scores and stuff, I would not expect the highest scores in the world. Um, like I said, for a preview event like this, to be as mixed as it was, they weren't really holding back. I don't, and now, like, again, do reviews matter? Not re Like, if the game gets a 55 versus a 72, I'm going down with the ship. <laughs> you know, I want to see this thing through. I want to see what they do to this game. I want to be able to complain or I want to be able to love it. You know what I mean? that That's what I've wanted for the longest of times, and I'm not going to let a review change it, but... But just to throw it in, if you do care about reviews, I, I got a prediction for you, and I don't think it's going to be all that high of a score. I really, th this seems to me like a high 60s, low 70s kind of game, if you care, if you care. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure, as always, you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.